Hello my friends, welcome back! Now before we start, let's make an important distinction. This is a loot. And this is a loot. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on this kind of loot. Can I get an amen up in here? Yeah, get ready for an exotic overload, because in this video, we're gonna look at Ruinous Effigy. A PvE beast, not so much in PvP. Next up, Traveler's Chosen. Make sure you've packed your space passport, because this quest is taking you all over the solar system. Io, Titan, Mercury, Mars, it's a big quest. And buckle up for some Beyond Light exotics. That's right, we're gonna hot step into the future, and we're gonna look at Hawkmoon. It's iconic past and how it's being modified for Beyond Light. And let's not forget no time to explain. Lucky for you, I do have time to explain why this exotic has three different models, and how this model, the Fate of All Fools, is the rarest exotic in Destiny's history. Yet, yeah, no lie, only one player in the world got to own this exotic. And while we're on the subject of Beyond Light, some pretty big news has emerged. This expansion now has a new release date, November 10th. Yeah, we gotta wait an extra two months to build Snowmen on Europa. I'm going to share my thoughts on this and look at how Bungie has changed Season 11's content schedule. Is there going to be enough stuff to keep us busy for the two extra months we gotta wait? Let's find out. But first a word from this video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Collect hundreds of unique champions by opening special shards. This is the mother of all shards. The sacred shard. It's basically exotic loot. Now you know how this works, the rarer the shard, the better the loot. So let's open a sacred shard and see what champion I get. It's the epic champion Cannoness, nice. Next step, equip her with weapons and armor to help boost her stats. And then it's campaign time. There are 12 unique bosses to take down, and every battle rewards XP and loot. And check it out, Raid has a brand new PvP mode, Tag Team Arena. Instead of a single 4v4 battle, you now get to send 16 champions into the arena, so choose your squad wisely. And because this is a brand new mode, you'll get special rewards for hitting a high rank on the leaderboard. And that's not all, brand new players get all this free loot, 10 mystery shards, and energy refill 100,000 silver and a free rare champion slasher and to collect your free loot simply visit the inbox on your home screen so yeah download the game for free on android ios and pc by clicking the links in the description box below okay so let's get into it ruinous effigy now let me start by saying this is what i want from my exotic weapons unfettered fun now this ain't just a gun it's a portable arcade machine every kill invites you to play an awesome mini game just how much damage can you inflict in 30 seconds? Let me explain how this addictive little gameplay loop works. You kill an enemy, it drops a purple orb, an orb that has three deadly uses. As a melee weapon to bash in skulls, as a shield that drains the life force from nearby enemies, and most satisfying of all as a mini bomb that detonates when you dunk it. Bash, drain, dunk, the unholy trinity of death. But you gotta be quick and creative because this orb doesn't last that long. The beauty of this weapon though is that the next orb is only a kill away. Like I said, an addictive gameplay loop and a mini game in its own right. I always find myself trying to take out as many enemies as I possibly can with a single orb and that dunk mechanic it just never gets old I effing love it. And the shield function you see here fills your life meter as it drains your enemies that's a really nice little touch and in case you were wondering the catalyst for ruinous effigy increases the orbs damage output. Now the lore for this weapon is awesome too. Ruinous effigy is powered by the darkness and consumes the light of anyone wielding it. That's why you start to lose life and eventually die if you use the shield function for too long. Now it's no coincidence that Bungie has introduced an exotic that's powered by the darkness in the season that directly proceeds beyond light, the expansion in which we actually get to wield the darkness for ourselves. The question is, at what cost? As for PvP, well carrying around a glowing purple orb makes you a bit of a vulnerable target, but I do love myself a good dunk kill. Personally I'll stick to using this awesome exotic in PvE. Next up, the quest for Season 11 exotic sidearm, Traveler's Chosen. This is a huge quest that will take you all over the solar system. You see, Zavala has ordered the Io, Titan, Mercury and Mars be evacuated, no doubt due to the presence of the pyramid ships, and it's your job to relay this order to the vendors of these destinations, Ashamir, Sloan, Brother Vance and Anna Bray. And of course, you'll need to complete various objectives while doing so. Now, you'll start off on Io where you'll need to complete the Pyramidian Strike and the heroic adventure Unexpected Guests. You'll then travel to Titan to take out the Hive Knight in the Lost Sector Methane Flush, collects Golden Age tech from chests in the Solarium and Festering Halls, and complete the Strike's Savathun Song. Next stop, Mercury. You'll need to complete the Strike's A Garden World, Tree of Probabilities, and the heroic adventure Bug in the System. And finally, 
Mars, where you'll need to defeat bosses in Escalation Protocol and complete the heroic adventure Deathly Tremors. So then, other than this exotic quest, what other Season 11 content is there to help keep us occupied while we wait for a delayed Beyond Light to drop? Well, let's have a look. First up, there's the Season 11 seal to complete that rewards you with the Forerunner title. Remember, you now have until November 10th to get this done. Next up, the Moments of Triumph seal for the MMXX title. Again, you now have until November 10th to complete this. Remember, during Moments of Triumph, the weekly reward limit has been lifted for Leviathan, Eater of Worlds, Spire of Stars, Crown of Sorrow, and Scourge of the Past. Yes, an uncapped reward limit for all five of those raids, so this really is the best opportunity you'll have to farm all those raid exotics that you still need. And that's exactly what I did for the Scourge of the Past raid. I farmed the final boss until I finally got Anarchy to drop. It took me seven attempts, so not too bad. I know some people who ran this raid over 15 times and still don't have the weapon, so yeah, if this is what you're gunning for, good luck. Now, I've actually been having quite a lot of fun with this weapon. I put its boss melting capabilities to the test and I was pleasantly surprised when I two-phased the Prophecy Dungeon end boss using a combination of Anarchy and Mountain Top. But it doesn't always need to be so serious, you can also do some really silly things with this weapon too, so let's have a look at that. So yeah, you can stick two pals with Anarchy's sticky grenades and have them run through enemies like an electrical clothesline, WWE styly. Okay, that's quite enough, Kurt Angle. What's next in Season 11? Well, starting August 11th and lasting until September 8th, we have a free live event for all players, Solstice of Heroes. And thanks to data mind info from Jinza, we now know exactly what kind of content we're getting. Check it out, you can earn and upgrade these exclusive glowing armor sets. Now, last year's armor sets were a major grind to unlock. Let's see if the same thing applies this year. And yes, you'll also be able to purchase Arc, Void, or Solar Armor ornaments from Eververse. And look what's back, the European Aerial Zone, an activity introduced during the 2019 Solstice of Heroes. Now back then this was a timed activity where you had to kill as many mini bosses as you could in 5 minutes, and then you faced off against a big boss. Once you killed that, treasure chests appeared in random locations on the map. The more mini bosses you killed, the more chests appeared for you to hunt down. Thing is, you also had a time limit to find these chests. And have a look at this, again according to data miner Jinza, there'll also be new triumphs for you to complete during Solstice of Heroes. So yeah, that's that about wraps up this event. And we ain't done with Season 11 just yet. Bungie added a new event to this season's calendar, Festival The Lost, which begins October 6th and ends November 3rd. There'll be new masks, new triumphs, and mummified rewards, whatever those are. Bungie also revealed there'll be a few additional Iron Banner events between September and November, and promised a few surprises too in the lead up to Beyond Light. So then, what do I think about this delay? Well, it's entirely understandable. There's a pretty damn solid reason for it, a global pandemic. Pandemic. Here's what Bungie had to say. The past few months have been a challenge and will continue to be during this pandemic. We've learned to create together in a new way by having to work apart from one another. Despite these hurdles, we're still committed to the same level of quality that our fans expect. So yeah, Bungie needs a few extra months to polish its game. As the great Shigeru Miyamoto once said, a delayed game is eventually good, a rushed game is bad forever. I'll let Bungie have the last word on this. Beyond Light sets the stage for an incredible future in Destiny 2 and though it's coming later than we originally anticipated, we're excited to continue that journey with you this November. Okay, let's now talk about the two exotics that we know are confirmed for Beyond Light, Hawkmoon and No Time to Explain. So then, Hawkmoon started out as one of the many PlayStation 4 exclusive items way back when Destiny 1 first launched in 2014. Now, this was kind of a big deal because Hawkmoon was the only weapon in the game to have this perk combination, luck in the chamber and holding aces. An absolutely beastly combo that applied additional damage to three random bullets, which, if they all stack together, could actually one-tap in the Crucible. Its range, its mag, its lethal perk combo made this the dominant PvP weapon for five months, until it was eventually nerfed in February 2015 and again in December 2015. Well, Bungie announced that Hawkmoon is making a return in Beyond Light, but it won't have either luck in the chamber or holding aces, which begs the question, can
can this exotic really be called Hawkmoon if it doesn't have that iconic perk combination? Bungie says it has a bold new vision for Hawkmoon that will move the randomness of the original perk combo in a different direction. What exactly this means is a bit of a mystery. According to game director Luke Smith, Hawkmoon is currently being playtested and will have an awesome quest to acquire it. I'll be keeping a close eye on this one. Next up, Bungie's bringing back No Time to Explain, an exotic pulse rifle. Now this particular weapon has three models. Let's start with the original, the Stranger's Rifle. Now the Stranger's Rifle was given to you by the Stranger after you completed Destiny 1's campaign. And to be honest, it, it wasn't that great. I certainly never used it. But it makes sense that Bungie's bringing it back for Beyond Light because the Stranger also makes her return in this expansion too. And here it is in all its glory. Now this weapon has a perk called Rewind. Missing a shot has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine. Now the exotic version of this weapon modified this perk but we'll have a look at that in just a moment. Next up we have the rarest exotic in the history of Destiny, Fate of All Fools. Now only one player in the world received this weapon and his name is Eric. Now there's a heartbreaking story behind this. You see Eric was a huge Destiny fan and he attended college to become a video game programmer. Sadly he began to experience neurological issues. He lost the ability to drive, to work and eventually became completely homebound. Now in an effort to heal him, Eric underwent seven brain surgeries in 11 months. Two of these surgeries involved removing large sections of his brain which left him struggling with impaired speech and memory. When Destiny was released, Eric was eager to play and doctors suggested playing Destiny as a form of physical therapy for his brain and memory damage. Now according to his wife, Eric began to show improvements in his speech after playing. Amazed by this improvement, Eric's wife posted about it on Reddit. Now this post was seen by community manager Deej who sent the couple a message reading, please make sure Eric checks his postmaster. Now the gift that Eric found waiting for him was this weapon, the fate of all fools. Now unbeknown to anyone at the time, this was in fact the prototype for the exotic scout rifle Jade Rabbit, which Bungie would eventually release in the Taken King a year later. You see, Bungie was simply using this stranger's rifle model as a placeholder. So yeah, there is no other version of this exotic weapon in the game. It's a one-off for Eric, and I'm sure we can all agree that that's that's pretty cool. And so we finally come to No Time to Explain, an exotic version of the Stranger's Rifle that you could earn from an exotic quest in the Taken King. Its perk, Rewind Again, means that precision hits are immediately returned to the magazine. Now the only time I ever found this gun useful was when I was shooting at bullet sponge bosses like good old Sepix Prime. Slow moving, large crit spot, the perfect kind of enemy for the Rewind Again perk. I mean other than that I pretty much left this weapon gathering dust in the vault. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Bungie modifies this exotic for Beyond Light. Now it's worth noting that No Time to Explain will also come with a weapon ornament and a catalyst, so yeah, roll on November 10th. Now guys, here's an interesting little fact about this channel, 58% of the lovely folk who watch my content aren't actually subscribed, so you know, if you've been lurking in the shadows, come to the light my friend and subscribe. When I hit a million subscribers, I'm gonna do a pretty amazing giveaway for you lot. Now if you enjoyed this video, you can let me know with a cheeky thumbs up, it really does help the video get seen by more people and it also helps the channel grow. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Click here for more content, stay safe, and we'll speak again very soon.